Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, God, thank you for another blessed connect. And God, thank you for just brothers and sisters in Christ that we can diligently seek after your word and seek after your face through prayer. And God, I just pray as your vessel tonight, God, that you would remove me of myself, cleanse me of any sin, and empty me of just any anything that might be just distracting or just might try to move. But God, I just want the spirit to work through me so I could be a blessing to your children and your people, God. And I just ask all of this in your precious heavenly name, in Jesus' name, amen. So staying faithful. If you want to turn to Genesis chapter 15, and I'm going to read straight through if you guys want to follow along. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what will thou give me, seeing I go childish? And the steward of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad, and saying, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto them, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Make note of this. Verse 6, and he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, take on me a heifer of three years old and a she-goat of three years old and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And he took him up all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. When the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, its deep sleep fell upon Abram. And lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, shall serve them and shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve, I will judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy father's house in peace, and thou shalt be buried in good old age. But in fourth generation, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And when it came to pass, that when the sun went down and it was dark, Behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed by the, between those pieces. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto this seed I have given this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the great the river Euphrates. Looking at Abram, in order to have a truly fulfilling and enjoyable Christian life, it's a matter of having faith in God. And it must be conquered either sooner or later. And it's your choice. God is never pleased with us unless we have faith in him. Hebrews 12, 1, for without faith, it is impossible to please him. He that cometh unto God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. If we're diligently seeking God, and if we have faith that God is going to deliver on our promises, we can be conquerors through God. And we can be conquerors in our daily life. This is not to say that, you know, when God's not pleased with us, unless we have the faith, unless we have faith in him, this is not to say that God doesn't love us, but life can be rough when we don't please him, when we're not following after God's commandment, when we're not taking heed to his word. Abraham was a regular person like you and me. He had to live and he had to have faith and his faith had to grow too. God came to him and promised him many wonderful things, which we all just read through. Three things we could take away from Abram tonight. There are three things we could take away from him. He did not worry about the obstacles, and neither did we, and neither should we. On a daily basis, we shouldn't worry about the obstacles we have to overcome. Because in regards to eternity and the time we have here on earth, these times that we have right now are only working to our benefit, are only working to bring further glory to God in the midst of it all. It's not until we reach heaven's doors that we will really 
truly understand what God was doing in our lives. Sometimes we could reflect on past decisions. We can go back into our past history, mistakes we've made, or maybe just within our Christian walk, just certain situations that didn't go according to our self-will. But God had a purpose through it all. God had a way and a will. And God was testing our faith. The testing of our faith is like pure gold in a fiery furnace. I mean, you could look throughout First Peter and just look at how Peter's faith was tried. And there's so many different examples through God's word of faith being tried. And so many times that so many characters and so many people within the Bible are so afflicted by having weariness of faith. Let's turn to Genesis. We'll look at one tonight. And this is Abraham's wife. Um, turn over two chapters, three chapters over, just right in chapter 18. And we're going to be looking at verses 11 through 14. This is Abraham's wife. I mean, one thing we could take away tonight. He did not worry about the obstacles, and neither should we. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of some women. Therefore, Sarah laughed. She laughed. She didn't believe that God was going to be able to deliver a child, especially in her old age. But she laughed within herself saying, I am waxed old. Shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I be of surety bear a child which am old? And what is so powerful about this next verse to me is just how it starts, really. Is there... Is anything too hard for the Lord? And at the time appointed, I will return unto thee. According to the time of life, Sarah shall have a son. God promised this. God promised that he was going to deliver seed unto Abraham, even in their old age. God had promised Abraham that he would make a great nation from his family. But his wife was too old to have a child. And he was too old to be a father. That could be discouraging, especially in your old age when... Abraham at this time is 100 years old. 100 years old having a kid. I mean, trust me, uh, most people would also bat their eyes and be like, God, I don't know if you could bring this to fruition. Um, Sarah laughed about God's promise. His family opposed him. Yet Abraham himself, he didn't even have a permanent house at this time. If you really think about it, he didn't have a house. He was old in his old age. He's about 100 years old at this time. And his wife alone started to discourage him and just say, do you really think God's going to provide on this promise? God promised that he would be the father of many nations. He promised Abraham this. And these are just some of the obstacles that we can list. Abraham faced many obstacles, primarily being that he was mocked by his own family, his own wife. Yet he believed and trusted God to continue. Number two, what else can we take away? He knew that God was greater than life's obstacles. Abraham had spoken with God and he had followed God's guidance. When he left his home in Ur of the Chaldees, he had watched the Lord empower him to fight battles that he couldn't even face himself. And he had to protect his brother Lot in this as well. And he had to fight battles that far exceeded his capability, but yet he knew that God was greater than those obstacles that he had to face. We find throughout Genesis that Abraham, through Abraham's failures, he was always able to go back on the faith that he had in God and putting his faith and trust in God. Number three, I mean, we could also look at his faith carried him throughout his life, throughout his entire life. At the time of his death, um, Abraham was about 175 years old. Throughout his entire 175 years on this earth, God, his faith in God carried him through his entire life. Genesis 25, um, chapter, or chap, chapter 25, verse 7. We can look at this and just say, and these were the days and the years of Abraham's life, which he lived 103 score and 15 years. And Abraham gave up the ghost and died in good old age, an old man full of years and was gathered unto his people. He only had one child. He only had one child by Sarah, his wife. He still did have children. He didn't have as many as 
the stars of the children, or he didn't have as many children as the stars, as God had said, but he still was able to have the faith. God did deliver on many promises that he foretold Abram. And as we know that Abraham birthed an entire generation that followed him, Israel. And if we really think about it, the Bible said he had died at a good old age. God promised him that he was going to live long. God promised him that he was going to have good health. God gave him 175 years on this earth. And through that time, he grew in wisdom. His faith never wearied. His faith carried him throughout his entire life, through trials, through tribulations, through having to fight battles that far exceeded his capability. He still had his faith and trust in God. Faith, when we can put our faith and trust in God, even in the smallest circumstances, um, God can do exceeding, exceedingly well with just a little bit of mustard seed of faith. Sometimes it's not about just the big things that we put our faith and trust in, like, you know what I mean? Massive decisions. Sometimes it's the small things that we have to put our faith and trust in. And that's having that faith as small as a mustard seed. Placing our faith in such small, maniacal things might seem kind of monotonous at times and kind of like, God, well, I know you're going to deliver on this, but it's not the aspect. It's that age old example. You're going to sit down on a seat. You know what I mean? You know that the seat's going to carry you and the seat's going to hold you. But say if somebody pulled that seat back, you know what I mean? You didn't have, we don't know all the times that that seat's always going to be there. We don't know if a chair is always going to be there to catch our fall. Just you look at something like a trust fall as well. When you look at a friend and you say, hey, I trust you. Will you catch me? You have faith that that person's going to catch you. The same way that we can have a relationship day in and day out and be successful and victorious in our relationship with Christ is knowing that when we fall back, God's always there. He's not going to play any tricks. God is a stable base and God, his mercy endures forever, but God will never leave us nor forsake us. Nothing separates us from the love of God. We are bought with a price. We are children of God. We have a heavenly father that at any time we may fall. There are footsteps in the sand. Sometimes that in our Christian walk, we might get discouraged. We might be walking. I mean, picture this, you're walking on a beach and you have two foot sets of footprints in the sand and God is walking down the beach with you. And those two sets of footprints are you and Christ. And you're continually walking with him, but there's going to be times and it is a given we all face discouragement. Our faith starts to weary, especially when things do not plan out the way we expect in our own self-will. But that's why we need to put our faith and trust in God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. When we start to lean on our own understanding, that's when you will see just one set of footprints in the sand. That God will be carrying us through those times because we leaned on our own understanding. We thought we knew what was best for ourselves. And we thought, okay, God, I don't know if I can put the faith in you to see me through this matter. But those are the times when he's carrying us through those times. His sovereign will will autocorrect us. God loveth whom he correcteth. These are biblical promises. But how did Abraham do all this? How did he have the faith? How did he stay faithful? He believed God. Three takeaways that I want to give you guys tonight, um, in addition to the three takeaways that we looked at, your faith will be tested regularly, regularly. It's not just a day-to-day -day type of operation that we're here. Uh, your faith is going to be tested continuously, not just regularly, continuously. Every hour of every day, you're going to go I find it more and more interesting now. Um, you come across a lot of non-believers, especially in today's world, just with COVID and here, or there, the next thing. Sometimes it could be hard to just express faith and having faith that God is victorious because God has already won the victory. 
we're already victorious within our Christian life because we already know who wins in the end. We've all read through Revelation. We know that God is going back and God's going to do miraculous and God's going to win the victory. But expressing that to someone else can be hard because a lot of times people do not want to listen to the gospel. And sometimes it can be hard because sometimes you have to have the faith to know that, look, you might be the one person that waters the seed or plants the seed, but you may not be able to reap the harvest of what you're laboring for. Sometimes you may be able to just plant that seed in somebody's life or just water the seed. And then it might take maybe another five or six, seven people to be able to really water that seed and see it grow. Maybe we won't be the one that harvests that seed and brings that person to Christ, but at least we had a process and at least we had the ability to be a step. And that's what you have to take confidence in. God blesses the fact that we are willing to try. God is able, but are we willing? And we got to ask ourselves every single day that same question. God is able and willing to do exceedingly above what we ask, but are we able and are we willing every single day to die to ourselves, take up our cross and live a righteous and holy life acceptable in God's sight? Your success in each test, each test that God gives you is determined by you. It's not about how you react. It's about how you take on these tests. Sometimes if we really put our faith and trust in God, those tests become a lot easier because God is working an exceeding amount of glory in the situation. It's bringing glory to him, but it's, it's, being, it's giving betterment to you and growing you, not only your faith, but you as a person. You ever go through a hard time or a hard test in life and you're walking with God. You can get through anything with God. And it, it's just, it's super encouraging to know that God is always there. God has a plan. He has a sovereign will. We may fall short and we are going to fall short every single day. We we're born in the sin. God, we, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we have that walk. We have the light within us. All we have to do is abide within his will for our lives. But we have to recognize that sometimes the safest place in the world is to smack dab at the center of God's will for our lives. And your success in each test that God gives you is determined by you, your positioning. Sometimes it's also just recognizing the direction that we're heading. Sometimes we might not be in that right position and that's okay. But as long as our direction is faced toward the cross and nowhere else, we can grow in encouragement. We can encourage ourselves in the Lord. We can seek God's face, not only through prayer, but through his heavenly word. Your life becomes easier when you believe God. Things start to look a lot less small and things start to look a lot less hard when you believe in God. When you let God, let go and let God every single day, especially in the things that you want to control, God's going to do exceedingly a, a amount, an exceeding amount of uh, good in your life. We have to recognize your life becomes easier when you believe in God. Believing God is the only way to live. You will begin to enjoy life when you believe in God and that God is pleased when we live a life of faith day in and day out. When we live a life of faith and that shows not only in what we say, but how we act and what we do to others, it's going to just not only be a testimony, but it's going to you be used in such a way that God can work miracles in your life. And I'm not saying miracles in terms of something supernatural, but God can work an exceeding amount of good in these types of times. Your faith is going to be tested regularly and consistently. Your success is determined by you and your reaction. And your life becomes easier when you believe in God.
three takeaways that you have to really put into your mind tonight. Your success in each test is determined by you. How are you going to react? Is it going to be from a place of self-will or faith? Abraham had the faith. For 175 years, he believed on God's name. And he did many, many wonderful things. And God worked an exceeding amount of good in his life. He was faithful in giving him old age, bearing him a child, and giving him grace and wisdom that he passed along to his seed. And that's a blessing in itself. Check your faith tonight. Check your faith tonight and today is another opportunity to rest and trust God in your life each and every single day. We need, we need some people and fellow Christians and fellow warriors to live for the cause of Christ each and every single day that are willing to live by faith. God wants to demonstrate to the world, to unbelievers, to those who openly rebuke God, that we as lights in this world, as saved believers of Jesus Christ, a faith that declares there is a God in heaven. He wants your good. And he sent his only begotten son down to die on the cross for your sins, for my sins, for the sins of the entire world. Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor any living creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. These are biblical promises. We have eternal security in God. Are we living a life of faith? Or are we imposing our self-will on things that we want to see get done? And let's take a page out of Abraham's book. For 175 years, this man lived. His faith carried him throughout his entire life. He knew that God was greater than the obstacles he faced. Even when his family mocked him when his wife openly mocked him, when things went awry, people laughed at him and he faced opportunities and he faced circumstances that maybe didn't seem possible or achievable at the time. He still had the faith that God was going to pull him through. Hebrews 12, 1, for without faith, it is impossible to please him. He that cometh unto God must believe that he is as a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Are we diligently seeking God? We got to ask ourselves this every single day and every single matter. Are we diligently seeking God in the decisions that we make in the relationships that we have in the friendships that we're crafting, but also in our ministries? Because also remember this, anything that you do in God's name for God's glory is your personal ministry. Whether you're going to work, whether you're talking to your friends. These are your personal ministries, guys. Be encouraged by that. Grow in your faith because of that. And God is going to do an exceeding amount of good in your life. These are biblical promises. And God's going to do incredible things in your life. How did Abraham do it? He simply believed in God. He trusted God's timing, God's provision, his direction, and he gave every matter that he was going in to God. Have faith. Stay faithful today and every single day. Live a life of faith. And remember, we need to be warriors, especially the whole world and this whole mess that is going on around this world. We need to be lights each and every single day. There's a lot of darkness and wickedness in this world, guys, but if we can draw closer to God each and every single day and ask God to set up some divine appointments in our lives, to be a blessing to others, to live dying to self every single day and live for his glory and his honor, 
and let your personal ministry shine and let God work through it. We should be able to have our faith and not let it grow weary in well-doing. So I just hope this was a blessing to you guys tonight. Three takeaways. Your faith is going to be tested regularly and consistently. Your success in each test is determined by you and how you react to it. And your life becomes a lot easier when you believe in God and have faith that he's going to work every single matter out in your life for his good, his glory, and your benefit. Let's go in a word of prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, God, thank you for the issue of faith. God is for by grace that we are saved through your son, Jesus Christ, who at the, at the work and the finished work of, at the cross of Calvary gave his life, his precious life, that we may have eternal life that God, we can come boldly before the throne of grace and humbly bow before you with our doubts, our worries, and our concerns, but also, God, with our praise. God, what an awesome and mighty God we serve in you. God, you look out for our benefit. You protect us from evil. And God, you provide us with everything that we would ever need. But God, allow us to ask ourselves on a continual daily basis. God, we know you are able to do everything for our good and for our benefit, but are we willing to live a life that is holy and acceptable in your sight? We have to do this every single day, God. Give us the strength, give us the vitality to live holy and righteously according to your will, individually, each for our lives. And God, I just ask that you would give us the strength and the wisdom to follow after your word. If we love you, we will keep your commandments and encourage us to do so. And I just ask all of this in your precious heavenly name, in Jesus' name, amen.